all right uh, welcome to planes over red and welcome to the a320 series uh, we are doing fire protection today and disclaimer remains same do not use any of this information that you're learning here in your practical life uh, please always refer to your manuals for current information so fire protection is very important because uh, uh, fire is one of the most dangerous things that can happen to an aircraft so 320 has a lot of fire protection systems and uh, here they are fire and overheat detection and extinguishing systems for the engines and the APU so there is overheat detection fire detection and extinguishing for the engines and APU smoke detection and extinguishing system for the cargo compartments and lavatory smoke detection for the avionics bay there's no extinguishing here portable fire extinguishers for the flight compartment and passenger cabin okay so we'll talk through one by one now engines and APU, uh, this is the standard diagram, uh, instead of engine fire is the APU fire sensing elements is the same thing. Each engine has two extinguisher bottles equipped with electrically operated squibs to discharge their contents. So these are fire extinguishing agents that are there in two bottles, so they are discharged. And uh, the APU has only one of it and it is two electrically operated squibs to discharge the agent. Now uh, the most important thing about this diagram is the loop A and loop B. So what is happening is there are fire sensing elements at different places in the engine itself. All right, so the one is at the pylon, one is at the turbine end, one is at the nacelle area. So you know there are different sensing elements at different places, and both have two loops connected to the fly fire detection unit (FDU). So now there'll be a warning released in the cockpit only when both loop A and loop B detect a fire. Now, in case one loop is inoperative, then even one loop detecting is enough. But if both are operative, as you can see, AND logic here, when both loops are operative, then it's an AND. Both loops have to give the fire warning. Or when either loop is inoperative. So very important to know that both loops have to give a fire warning. Another uh, thing in this is that uh, there's also a fire alarm that is triggered when loop A and loop B have burnt within a few uh, seconds of each other. So loop A has burned due to fire. If loop B burns immediately due to the fire, the fire warning is triggered. So there are three uh, sensing uh, element places and there are two loops that are connected to the fire detection unit and it sends the master warning ECAM and continuous repetitive chimes, that is CRC. All right, this is for both engines and APU. Now, the, there's a fire push button for the engine and for the APU. We'll discuss about the engine what happens and we'll discuss about the APU what happens. Very important to know this. This is repetitively asked. So engines, it will. if you press this fire push button on the overhead panel, it will silence the oral warning. It arms the extinguisher squibs. It shuts the low pressure fuel valve. Hydraulic fire shut off valve. Engine bleed valve is also shut. Pack flow control valve is also shut. Cuts off the FedEx power supply, deactivates the IDG. All this is very important to know because you have to know what the sequence, what is happening. So, and after this, of course, uh, if you have cut the low pressure fuel valve, the engine is all uh, shutting down. The most important thing about this button is this action is irreversible. You cannot reverse it. If you have put the fire handle out once, you cannot reverse it back because you have deactivated the IDG, the FedEx has cut off the power, the power supply to the FedEx has been cut off and all these valves are shut so it's it's an irreversible action in the case of an APU first it just shuts down the APU silences the oral warning arms the squib on the APU fire extinguisher closes the fuel valve shuts off the APU fuel pump very important as well closes the APU bleed valve and cross bleed valve and deactivates the APU generator so with this handle on the APU and on the engine these are the actions that happen Okay, uh, if you guys uh, need time, pause this uh, moment and note this down. Okay, then uh, we'll talk about avionics bay. Now, avionics bay is where all your computers are kept, and uh, it doesn't have a fire extinguisher. Uh, so it is a, it has a smoke detector in the extraction duct of the avionics ventilation system, which detects smoke in the avionics compartment. If you're not sure about all of this, you go back to the avionics uh, ventilation video. Have a look, you'll find the smoke detector there. Uh, 
and on the emergency elect power plan overhead panel that's on the left side a smoke light comes on in amber along with a warning on the ecam and smoke is detected in the duct on the ventilation overhead panel on the right side this is both the flight li uh, fault lights of blower and extract push button comes on in amber when smoke is detected in the avionics ventilation duct now this is you guys can go to the avionics ventilation uh, video and talk about uh, uh, you can look up for that in smoke configuration what happens so both the lights come out and then you do the smoke configuration to eliminate smoke and at least uh, throw it overboard and not allow the smoke to enter the uh, passenger area or cockpit for that matter okay so there's no fire extinguishing in avionics bay lavatory now lavatory has a smoke detection system which has a one smoke detector in each lavatory a cids code decoder encoder unit that links the detector to the entire cids cids system now what is cids is cabin intercommunication data system which has a uh, uh, contact with both the cockpit and the cabin as you can see here's lavatory smoke detector if there's some smoke detected in the lavatory it goes to the cids it's a system which generates both warning in cockpit and cabin crew cabin uh, where cabin crew can take necessary action each lavatory waste bin has an automatic fire extinguishing system as well this is important so the avionics bay doesn't but the lavatory have a fire automatic fire extinguishing system cargo smoke detection now uh, this is some before we actually I start explaining this uh, i want to let you know that uh, this is this varies from different aircraft to aircraft so do not get confused to refer to your manual which aircraft you're flying for example a 320 or uh, neo has a different system 321 has a different system 319 has a different system 320 enhanced has a different system so uh, i've just picked up uh, the enhanced version just for the explanation sake Uh, so kindly just refer to your uh, manual for the cargo uh, detection and uh, extinguishing so cargo this this cargo smoke panel on overhead uh, panel and uh, what happens is if there's a smoke detected same uh, principle both the loops that's why it's an and gate both the loops have to satisfy that the smoke has been detected only then a warning will be triggered on the ecam and the smoke light will be shown on the overhead panel the forward has only one uh, two smoke detectors but the aft has four smoke detectors and any and both the loops have to meet the requirement to generate a warning and this there's an option either this both these both or these both or gate and then that will be generating an ecam warning okay and uh, another important uh, point uh, in cargo smoke detection is Uh, same thing if even if one loop is inoperative one loop giving warning will be considered so it's an or gate in case one loop is inoperative okay and uh, let's talk about extinguishing uh, again this is going to vary a lot in different aircraft uh, different type i mean on the 320 family i have just picked up the enhanced series again so there are two uh, extinguishing bottles here bottle 1 and bottle 2 there is one nozzle in the forward cargo two nozzles in the aft cargo and uh, the design is such that both the fire extinguishing bottles supply to both the forward and aft cargo so that you know in case anything happens to one there's a standby backup for the other one to discharge so there but you have to remember that there's one nozzle here and two nozzles in the aft and there are two agents agent 1 and agent 2 now the agent 1 discharge light comes up here and after 60 minutes agent 2 discharge light will come to asking asking you to discharge the agent 2 this is to maintain the consistency of the agent in the cargo hold because you, cargo hold is a very uh, dangerous uh, fire uh, that can take place on an aircraft because a lot of uh, inflammable items are there because passengers are carrying a variety of things so it is a very dangerous uh, uh, you know fire uh, place to uh, fire to take place there so hence uh, there's a time gap of 60 minutes so that the consistency is maintained and you can land within that time so all you have to remember is there are uh, two nozzles at the back and one nozzle in the front and this is a pressure switch that releases the water pressure and agent want an agent to i think yeah so the smoke light is a smoke detector i just showed you in the previous slide so i guess that's all and uh, we have discussed everything uh, let me just go back and check 
engines, APU done, cargo, lavatories, avionic bay, and portable fire extinguishers. Well, you can just refer your refer to your manuals. What kind of uh, portable fire extinguisher is on board? There are both in the flight compartment, depending on the passenger seating capacity. There are different uh, number of portable fire extinguishers that are carried. And passenger cabin uh, and flight compartment. Flight compartment is the cockpit one. It has one. And passenger cabin has a uh, depends on your uh, number of passengers that are traveling. So that's all on uh, fire protection, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page for regular updates. Give the video a thumbs up if you like this video and share it too so that everyone learns about it. And comment below if you have any doubts. You can find me on these links below on WhatsApp, email, Facebook or YouTube. Cheers and happy landings guys. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.